Guys, interview time, man. Now, I got a short story for you. I asked hundreds of you on social media, who do you want to hear from? And this was the band that was at number one on your list. This is, uh, it, it was pretty much unanimous across everybody. Now, Monkey Boy has been playing these guys on his new rock segment for the last few months. And with your help, their tune, Am I Blind?, is poised to go top 10 on foundations and it's killing it on the other charts. This, uh, this is awesome, man. And I got a feeling once the show airs with your help, you're going to push them into the top 10 easily. Okay. That die trap is over with Alex, Josh from Sequoia are here. Thanks for being on real rock nights, guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here, man. Thank you. No problem. And now first things first, and uh, I normally wait till uh, towards the end of the interview to talk about website, but uh, this is why everyone wanted to hear from you is because listeners, their biggest thing cited for wanting to have you on the show and hear from you is uh, because they couldn't find your website. Is that true? Are you flying <laughs> sightless? <laughs> we, we are currently flying sightless right now. We have, we have the merch site, we have all our socials, but yes, we are um, still, still sightless um, as far as like an official band website goes. It is in the works and we're, we're hoping to get it out in the next month or so, but that is, uh, that is true. Okay. Do you, do you guys need a place to park an info page or something? Because I, I can, uh, create a page and put a password and send it to you. And you guys can uh, post it on the real rock nights website. Hey, we'll, you know, we'll take whatever, but uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, our, our developer will get it, get it resolved pretty soon here and we'll, we'll have it up and running, but you can find pretty much everything we're doing on, on all of our socials. We'll, if we, even when we do have a website, we're going to keep that updated a hell of a lot more than, than the website. So, okay. um, but you can still, all of our merch is online available and, and all of that too. So it takes a little bit of digging. It's kind of a, an obscure band name. So we'll sometimes come to the top, sometimes not. So. That's, well, I got to, who is it? Uh, Sequoia Winter, <laughs> some uh, yeah. hip hop artist. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is not us. No. Uh, is- yeah. The, well, I no, you don't. You don't look like a chick. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but okay, uh, you guys are out of indie, right? Yeah, correct. Now, uh, all of you from Indianapolis, or did some people gravitate towards there to start the band? I am, I am born and raised in Indy. Um, and then Josh and our guitar player are from a, a small town outside of Indy. Yeah. A small town, so, but all the general area. So did you guys know about each other? Were you aware of each other or how did that come together where you gravitated towards each other and started a band? Well, Alex and I were in a, like an old metalcore band back in like, what was it? 2012, 13 ish. Something like that. Yeah, it was a while ago. Whenever metalcore was like real, real cool, we were okay. in most of the bands. And uh, we, we, he played guitar, I played drums. We'd always kept in touch. He went and did other stuff. I quit playing in bands just because like, it's just, dude, it's a lot of work. And if you don't have people that are committed, it's like, it's just not worth the time. I joined the army while I was in the National Guard and I came back and I wanted to get back in a band. I'm like, even if I'm just doing it for fun, like I just want to play again. Okay. And, uh, I saw, I, I started seeing Mike, our guitar player, he went to high school with me, but he was a little younger, but I saw, I saw him just shredding, putting up all these like riffs and stuff that I wanted to hear. And him and I started jamming, well, just like writing stuff together, just seeing like what we liked and started hanging out as friends and stuff. And then uh, it got like heavier and heavier, but then we're kind of like, okay, this is fun, but this isn't what we actually want to do as a band. Like we kind of want to have like our more commercial, like our, like, our roots from music. We want to pull some of that stuff out with like a splash of what we were currently writing. Okay. And the whole time, like we knew, like we didn't want to do screaming. We wanted to do something just that more people could appreciate. Like we feel like you can still be heavy without screaming. You can still do the same kind of stuff and still get the same emotion off without screaming. So it's like, we were kind of thinking who we wanted. And I, in the back of my head, we started jamming with another guy at first, but it just wasn't quite what the band needed. And it was just like, in the back of my head knew that this is what we needed. He had sang it like backups in the other band we were in. And dude, from the first time we heard it in the studio with Alex on it, it was literally perfect. And him and I had talked about create. It's funny because what Sequoia is, is what him and I had talked about back in the day that we wanted to create. It's just like, 
it's weird how you have to go away and do different things to like make the connections to all bring it back. But like this band, what we're doing now, what's cool is like, dude, this is like what we set out to do from early on. So it's fun. So it's, it's almost like you, uh, how do I say this? <laughs> It's almost like you went in a sideways circle, if that makes sense. Like yeah, you, yeah. you had what you wanted and then you like went sideways, but then like the other half of the circle came back. Now, so this, this is a Sequoia that you actually wanted to create in the beginning, correct? It, it's getting there, man. It's like, what's, what's cool. And what we didn't even realize too, is like at the beginning it was, it was heavier, but it's like, we knew we wanted like Alex's voice, as soon as we heard what this was, we were like, okay, we want to just basically be a, like a heavier active rock, mainstream rock, whatever you want to call it, just rock band. Like we just wanted to play what felt natural with just singing on it. So that's what it became, but our tastes have grown. We've been out and experienced different things over the last, you know, we, people don't know this, man, we've been putting out music since 2020 but we've been a band since the end of 2017. Okay. That was, that was going to be one of my real close questions was yeah. when did Sequoia actually start? So you've been a band since 2017. Yeah. But you really only came on the scene in 2020. Because like, yeah, we've just got a lot, uh, not, not a lot of experience, but like we've just done a lot of the wrong things in bands before we've thought we should have done things and should have trusted our gut and didn't fall to other people. And it didn't get us where we wanted. So it's like him and I had very similar, similar visions on how to run the band, what we wanted to do with the band. And it's like when it's, when all three people are in the same like wavelength, it's really easy just to focus in and go. And that's as soon as we knew we had something too, because like everything we did, it's just like, it kind of went this way. But what's cool, what I was getting to is like the, our tastes have changed over the last years. And it's like, we've gotten to the point where it's like, instead of back in the day, when we would write songs, we would be like, Hey, we want to go out and write a song just like this. And we would demo, we would say what we do. Now it's like, I hear what they were going for, but like, this is how we would do it. So we're on to like, we're finally starting to find our little avenue where like, this is our sound to where like, we're finally in the direction that we're like, we like to be going. And the stuff that we're still writing, is just, it just keeps progressing that way. It feels good. That's, uh, that's really cool to hear because uh, um, it's going to, you're going to have that same sound. It, you know what it's like when you hear certain bands and you know right away like who it is yep is that what you're saying sequoia is finally getting that footing where once we hear one of your tunes once we hear alex alex voice we're gonna be no right away hey I it's sequoia it yeah and that's that's kind of you know you're finding your it, your X factor, your whatever you want to call it. And we're really finding that, you know, this past year we've worked with, we just got back like four days ago working with our third producer uh, in the past year. And it has taught us a boatload of what we want to do, dialing in what we want to be playing, what we enjoy playing and what we are best at. So um, yeah, we're finding that like Sequoia sound where it's like, okay, I know that's them, you know, like without a shadow of a doubt, that's Sequoia. Mm -hmm. What pieces, uh, the, the information is already out there about your influences and shit. And I try not to ask the same quintessential questions. Every stupid ass radio guy. Asks. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what pieces of certain influences would you say that you gravitate towards when you're actually writing your music? I think, I think honestly, it differs for each one of us individually. Um, and, and I think we bring our individual tastes into the, into the studio when we are writing. Yep. Um, I, I think, you know, like I said, each of us are different. Um, I'm really in that early 2000s, like, you know, Linkin Park, Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin, Creed. Okay like all of that realm. But, you know, my favorite bands growing up were Corn, System of a Down and Slipknot. Like I loved all of that. So that, that has a heavy influence on me, but I think once we're in the studio, I, I think those have an influence on us, but we don't pay attention to that. No, we just write, like we have a feel for a song we want and we write the song, how it wants to be written. Not okay. any like, Oh, this is influencing. Not, oh, this is the way Corey would do it. I'll do it this way. Exactly. Oh, this is the way head would play that. <laughs> right. but, okay. We're even starting to find things too, where it's like, we're in the studio and on these last couple songs that we've done, 
where it's happened in two different cities with two different producers, but it's like, we'll do something vocally or we'll do something musically and where it's, we're not really thinking about it. And we stop and like, man, that's kind of like this. It's like, well, do you need to take it out just because it's like that? Because is it different? Does it sound good? Does that make us maybe draw, like, does that draw a little bit of a comparison to this, but still make us different in this sense? It's like, what we're getting better at, I feel like is knowing kind of like, since we do have an idea of what this sound is, it's like, we know where we can kind of go go off and stay into, but it's like, we're still creating our own path within all of that. That's what's cool. And I think what it really is, is you kind of hit, I think it's Alex's voice because he doesn't sound to me like a typical like rock singer. So there's just a lot of different, you might hear a lot of different vocalists in it, but there's some like twang in his voice too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of different things you might pick up and hear. And what's cool now for us is we're figuring out how does that work within this heavier aggressive sound and what's cool and it's more in the stuff people haven't heard yet that's going to be coming out in the next couple months is it's it's a really cool like play off of each other that we've like we really really like like it's it's something that we're going to keep driving and and running with for a while it feels good to us well like uh no you only really i've really only heard anything off this last album and i heard a little bit off of uh um oh god Damn, now I'm now I'm uh, blanking. What was uh, Soul? What in the hell was that song? Soul, oh, Wasted Soul. Wasted Soul. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I heard some of that. I So I have heard like a little progression as far as like years like, or time going by rather. Yeah. And uh, uh, um, now you're saying that uh, you're, how, how much do you feel you're growing? as far as just just within the last like couple years i would say last year oh my gosh i well because we started writing these songs in 2016 2016 to when we released it you know mm-hmm. we had we had we got some progression but i think from when we released our first single lost and reckless in 2020 to now we've gained <laughs> probably 10 times the experience we did from 2016 to release time. I mean, we've worked with some really, really great people. <laughs> I mean, we've worked with, uh, am I blind was done with Zach Jones out in LA who does, uh, all of fever three, three, three stuff. That's why it sounds like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zach's he's, the man. He's the man. He, man. he did that. He did the new crown, the empire album. Um, he's done a lot of, of really great people. Um, and you know, we've, we've gone on to work with, uh, Andrew Bayless, Andrew Bayless, who just finished up the sleeping with sirens album. He does all of jelly rolls stuff yeah. varsity as well varsity. Yeah. And then, uh, we just got back four days ago from working with, uh, Jonathan Dolise, who just did the new, uh, Kane Hill singles. Oh, kick ass. So we've, we've just gone kind of shot for the moon. I mean, we've even written with uh, Clint Lowry from seven dust. We got a song with him that we wrote, like we've just kind of uh, shot for the moon on who we want to write with and who would be the best fit. And all of those guys combined um, have picked up some from every one of them. Every single one yeah. of them has taught us kind of like help guide us, you know, it's what it's really done, dude, to be honest, like the last year, what we've really done is like, we had this idea of what the band was and what we thought it was and what we thought made us cool but we forgot that those songs had been written a while. We'd had so many demos that we'd worked with, but we just didn't know what to do with them yet. And it's like going into these studios and figuring out what we were and we weren't, because when you get, when you start working with these guys, like they know what works and what doesn't. So it's like, when they hear you doing something like they cut the bullshit, they cut it all out for you. So it made us humble ourselves. And we're like, okay, cool. So instead of getting upset about this shit, we took all the criticism, we took all the pointers and all the help they gave us came home and worked on all this stuff on our own. And now it's like each time that we step foot into a studio, it's just a little bit easier every single time. And it's just like this last time that we went in there this, this last weekend, and it's nothing about anything that we'd done prior, but it's like, we walked in this last week and we had an idea and we knew what kind of songs we wanted to write. And usually we had an idea, but then we go in and it completely changes. When we went in, we went in this last week and we're like, we want this type of sound. This is what we want to deliver. Let's see what this sounds like. And it's like, we think if we trust our gut, like this is going to be the sound. And we went in there and dude, these last two songs that we recorded are by far our favorite thing that we've done. And it's just like, it clearly it's these last two songs plus the other ones that we've done this mm-hmm. last year that haven't been released mm-hmm. have literally opened up this whole gate 
and like let us see where we need to go. It just writing the songs the way we've done them basically has just kind of like opened up everything for us. Open it. How does that make you guys feel when when you are going in to record this and before like really kind of having a blueprint or outline, but really not knowing what the end product is going to be. But now like having the balls to know, you know, what sound you're going for, what exactly you want this to end up being. How does that feel to you? It's a good time, man. Yeah. Like it's it's literally like and, and the number one thing that we do is like we trust each other too. We trust the producer we're going to. And then the uh, three of us in the band trust each other. Like I trust what Mike's going to do on guitar, what he's going to do on drums, what they're going to do with the composition with the producer. So that way I can come in and do some melodies and lyrics and things like that. Everybody pulls their weight and does their part. And that trust is there. So that way, when it's time for us to deliver, we can because the other guy's doing their job. And that is so damn rewarding because that's been something that I've been in a ton of bands, like a ton of bands. And it's, I haven't had that. And I've been playing shows since I was 12 years old and haven't had this in a band. So having this and finding this, it feels natural. It feels right. And it feels like we can take this all the way. Well, that makes it so hard to do your job, man. If you're worrying about like how or what the other guy is doing all the time and trying to help them and it's like, no, 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 do this, do this. You know, your own part is going to suffer. So we've started to find too, man. It's like, yeah, I play drums, but there's like a reason that Alex or Mike might have a drum idea for me. It's the feel or something about it. So it's like, it may not be exactly what they're recommending to me, but like, I know for a fact that somewhere in there, like the answers in there. So it's like the fact that I can trust them. It helps me think of my instrument in a different way. It's also like improving us as we go as well. So it's just like the more that we're working outside the band, the more that we see the work pays off back when we come together. It's just, dude, it's, I think we're finally just figuring out where to put our work, where it works at. And it's just, I don't know, man, we figured out a lot of stuff in the last year. It's been a fun year for us. Yes. That is wild, man. It's, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm okay. You started in 2017, but really didn't come on the scene until 2020. And, uh, with, uh, what did you four songs? You released four songs in, in that year, year, right? Yeah. Okay. Within those four songs, now you have a song that, uh, what are you in the twenties on the mainstream charts? And then, uh, you're like, uh, currently 17 on the secondary charts, but I, I know for a fact, man, uh, once I see the reflection in the charts, once I have a, an artist on the show, my listeners, uh, because I beg them all the time when I play whoever artist that is. And right now, I'm sure they're out there rolling their eyes right now. Request, 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 radio station old, radio station far away, you know, number that you have for a radio station from 10 years ago. Call up and request a fucking song. It's going to work the same. And uh, I can see the reflection in the charts, like, because that band will shoot up like six, maybe seven spins. And uh, so I, I'm, I know you're poised to go top 10 on foundations on the second charts. I know that for a fact. Uh, just anyway, where I'm getting that is uh, just with those four songs coming out to see where you guys have gotten already just within a year. It's like, man, it, it, it's kick ass. It really, really is. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's cool to see in like, you know, we had some setbacks in that 17 to 2020 time frame there. And we wanted to be out in 2018, 2019, if we could have. Uh, we had a lot of setbacks, but I think all of that helped us a ton and prepared us. And, you know, the success, while it is incredible and we're forever grateful to us, um, I mean this in the most humble way. I don't think it's incredibly shocking to us because we knew we had put in three, four years of work before anything came out. And we were like, we've put in all this time, all this effort, you know, we wish we could have been releasing stuff and playing shows and this and that, that would have helped us. But coming out when we did, um, you know, we hit the ground as hard as we could, you know, running as fast as we could. And, uh, you know, everything in the world happened, which kind of was wild as well. Yeah. Um, I think it, it 
it hurt and helped a lot of bands. Um, I think if we would have came out sooner and been touring, it would have hurt us, but where we were, it actually helped us, um, 100%. tremendously. Um, so, you know, it's, <coughs> it's been a wild roller coaster for us and we don't expect it to stop anytime soon. That's for sure. I hope it does it. With the things that did happen when you released, what was going through your minds about your life? Uh, it is. Huh? It is. Are you, talking about, are you talking about when COVID started happening? Yeah, yeah. Pissed because, like, dude, like, for instance, like, one of our setbacks, I crushed my thumb at work. So, like, Ooh. I had, like, an eight-month rehab on my thumb alone, and then I had to relearn, like, not relearn how to play my drums, but I Relearn definitely, how to hold the sticks and shit? Yeah, I cannot use my left hand the way I used to, but, like, okay. the thing is, I still want to play the way I used to. So, it's like, we had to take time for me to do that. We had you know, some other things happen within the band as far as like uh, possible members and stuff like that. We found our guy and it's just like making sure that checks and balances are there before we jumped and ran into stuff. So it's like, we were pissed because we were finally gearing up. It's like, all right, we've got the songs going. We've got all of this lined up. We're ready for this. We're ready for that. And then it's like, nobody can do anything. So it's like, yeah, but what we did was we got real pissed and we were like, it was never what was cool for us is I feel like a lot of bands probably quit during that time or they lost their motivation. We looked at it as, okay, fine. If everybody's paused, that means everybody's on the same playing field right now. Let's fucking write. Let's get in the studio. Like Mm -hmm. let's bank as much stuff. Let's take this extra year to really polish off this sound that we think we have so that when stuff starts coming back into swing, it's like, we're ready. We're not guessing what we are. It's like, no, we know what we have and let's run with it. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I, uh, I completely do. And the whole thing with what you were saying with, uh, during this, a lot of bands, uh, quit and that stuff. I don't necessarily think that they quit. I think that, uh, they sloughed off. They, yeah. they sat back and went like, yeah. Oh, what? there were some that went on vacation. You know, some people went home, didn't, did not write, did not worry about actually working. Okay. Cause this is a job. Yeah. You know, absolutely. what you guys are doing is your livelihood. Yeah. You know, you can't just like lay back. That would be like me <laughs> when, when shit shut down, just sitting down and not worrying about anything. And oh. uh, okay. I'll, I'll pick it up in a year when it gets back. So, uh, but what I have, what I did see through that was a lot of young bands, <laughs> that stayed with it and kept on doing stuff, kept writing, kept doing stuff in the studio, kept growing and growing. They never lost their momentum or as in, as in your case, gained more momentum because of what you were doing, because you were ready to come out of the gate full force when things opened up. So uh, just for that, you guys are really, really fucking smart. (laughs) Thank you. We've been trying to do it that way. So it's good to have someone notice that every once in a while. (laughs) <laughs> um guys uh now like i was telling you uh uh right now am i blind is number 17 on foundations and i know that uh you're gonna be uh well i can't let the cat out of the bag foundations will kill me but i know where you're gonna be like uh coming up this uh, this weekend uh so i'm not gonna be playing you for probably uh, about 45 minutes or so uh playing am i blind rather but I would like to play a song out of the interview. What, in your opinion, is your favorite Sequoia song outside of Am I Blind? The one that we just recorded. <laughs> well, dude, uh, I don't have access to that. <laughs> uh, do you want it from both of us? Or do you want like one song to play? No, no, no. Uh, just once. I was just like, this is not Sequoia music. <laughs> but no. Uh, a song... Just one song between two of you. What? Oh, God. I don't know. I've been on a country rotation, so I'm not the person to ask here. You've been on a country rotation. Uh, oh, cool. You, uh, you're, are you one of those people that uh, uh, kind of uh, relishes and uh, uh, pretty much appreciates all genres of music? I, I definitely do. I, do. I, do. Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of country. I listen to... Um, a lot of, uh, like movie scores, like, you know, anything, of course, Hans Zimmer is amazing and any, any big theatrical scores. I love that. And then I also love some really cool, like acoustic indie artists, um, just acoustic and sad songs. I don't know. Sometimes it's, 
I love it. So um, I appreciate a wide, wide range. Does that, uh, do you feel that adds to the way you sing? I, okay. I know it does. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll say this. We went down and recorded in Nashville with, uh, with Bayless. And I don't know if it was Nashville coming out of me or all the damn Luke Combs I've been listening to, but I hit the first <laughs> and it sounded like Luke Combs was in the damn booth. So uh, it is, I had to dial it back just a tad. It's like every once in a while, like it's probably every time like him and I are just doing demos, like in his basement, just figuring songs out before we go to the studio. I'll be tracking it and he'll sing something and I'll be like, yo, that was cool. But like, if we were in a country band, like, you know, <laughs> we, can't, we cannot do that. Well, one, one thing about that, that's kind of cool though, uh, having a singer that uh, has that ability to uh, turn it on and turn it off. There it is. Uh, yeah. Southern there rock. There it is. <laughs> Southern yeah. rock is really big right now. That sound is really big right now. Actually, uh, uh, one of the, one of the record reps I work with, uh, pull the band. There's a town about uh, 20 minutes from here called uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas. And uh, he pulled a band from there. And when I saw it on his priorities list, I was like, what the hell, dude? Because uh, my promotions director used to date their bass player. They're a country band. When I <laughs> saw that on, I was like, what the hell is like uh, concrete marketing is like active rock. What the fuck? They're crossing and over. Then I said something to him and he's like, listen to the singer. I'm like, yeah, but listen to the slide guitar. And <laughs> I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and now they're on their second tune and uh, hell. Uh, I think they're like in the thirties on foundations charts already. And yeah. they are, like you said, crossing over. It's mm -hmm. like, I can already tell the singer is singing differently than he was before. And the music is not the same. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you in the next single that we're going to release here soon, you're going to hear some twang. Like, it's not like, it's not, you'll hear it. Like you'll, you're going to hear stuff out of his voice in like the next two to three songs that, I mean, it's different each song, but it's cool. It's just an evolution of it's basically what it is, is instead of trying to find cool things to sing on songs, we find the coolest way that he can sing on a song. If that okay. makes sense, like, instead of just be like, this sounds like it should have this. It's like, okay, but what are your strengths? Yeah. You would sound sick ripping this kind of thing on it. Do the sickest version of that. So, okay. oh, okay. You kind of, that's the way I actually like artists and bands to do covers. I yeah. don't want to hear like karaoke. No. You know, do it yourself. If it's like, like say if it's a Sequoia cover, make it sound like fucking You're Sequoia. You know, I don't want to hear it done like Aerosmith or, you know, yeah. it's like, uh, not that you look like Steven Tyler or anything. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But uh, have you guys settled on a song yet? Okay. Uh, so uh, a song, a non Sequoia song, right? No, no, no. A so Sequoia song. Oh, a Sequoia song. Oh, yeah. I would say Lost and Reckless. I would, yeah, I would say I would say Lost and Reckless. That yeah. one's that one's got uh, that one's got a great hook, and that's a, a crowd favorite for us when we play live. So yeah. Lost and Reckless for sure. Okay, yeah. all right, uh, Lost and Reckless. You got it on all the socials, and uh, your merch store. Where do you have that parked right now? We got that on. Uh, it's I believe uh, all the socials are. Uh, he has to look it up. I do. I do. <laughs> I'm not even lying to you, man. <laughs> I uh, well, because all of our social handles are Sequoia Music, uh, okay. but our merch store is sequoia.bigcartel.com. So, oh, okay, it's uh, over Big Cartel. Over Big Cartel for now, the best, cheapest way for a small independent band like us to get it up and running until the uh, the site is fully functioning. That's and uh, uh, Music buy their song. merch man support sequoia help them i mean you guys are uh growing musically incredibly so uh we got to get you to grow financially hey like, that's as, uh as fast as this is preach, brother. <laughs> preach, brother. <laughs> that is one thing people don't understand everything we have done we are an independent band we are independent artists we have no support we have no management or label or anything like that so i noticed that Everything you've heard recorded has been self-funded. Everything we do, <laughs> sure every merch run, like it's all, 
out of the passion for doing what we love to freaking do. Yeah, because we That's, love to make music for you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying that like you're a dick? <laughs> Just no, oh, I love it. I really do. Do we? Yeah, <laughs> did we had we we played our first show? Uh, when was it? We finally got a venue. A couple months ago. Play. Yeah, a couple months ago. And dude, literally like. We did it back in the hometown because it's like I wanted our first show to be for people that really knew. Like I didn't want to just okay. I didn't want to go and open a show. Like I wanted it to be in a venue that was smaller. That way, like the people that have really been listening to the songs mm-hmm. for the last two years, like the people that were in our home, like even before people been listening to the songs, like the ones that have heard the demos before they'd been released. Like I wanted them to have that night with them first. And what was so cool is I would be willing to bet almost eighty percent of the people that came there either had one of our shirts or bought a shirt and it's just like dude like seeing that kind of stuff oh wow there, i was gonna say that had to be wild dude, that people, was cool people don't understand how cool that shit is for us like yeah it's cool to like have a shirt bought for your band and stuff but like dude to see it like we came up with those designs like gabe our buddy that does all of our stuff like we sat down and crafted all this put it on shirts like yeah we didn't pay other people to do this like anything that you see that we've got like we've put together every song music video that you've seen like the wasted soul video for instance we put that together within 24 hours because the whole video fell through and the song had already been uploaded and ready to go to Spotify. So we had to have a video for oh, it. So you had to have some, okay. Dude. So we've got like, dude, the scarred video with all the flamethrowers and stuff. Like we did all of that. Yeah. We, like, we bought all flamethrowers, had them <laughs> shipped here and did it ourselves. Like, we just, I wasn't going to say it. But yeah, <laughs> we did. We did. Isn't, it, isn't so. there like a background check for that shit? No. You know, surprisingly when it's just, <laughs> Straight from China, they don't really check. So, <laughs> you got um, flamethrowers from China. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still here to talk about it. So, we're going to prison. Yeah. <laughs> I got blackmail material on Sequoia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but I honestly, I, I can say this for all of us, even if it wasn't for all the, you know, the plays and stuff, we would still be playing music Absolutely. every single day. Yeah. But honestly, the fans and people telling us they love it is what keeps us going every single day to do it. Okay. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, go out, support Sequoia and, uh, help them keep food on the table. Seriously, man. (laughs) And hopefully, hopefully they'll do a couple more songs for us. Lost and reckless is the tune. It is here, right here, right now on real rock nights. Thanks a lot for being here guys. Yeah. Thank Thank you. you.